zero addicts. You heard me right. Addicts. You, 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 and me. We are all dopamine junkies. We all require our regular hits of the feel-good substance called the dopamine. As a result, the very qualities we have as human are being lost as we dive deeper and deeper into this addiction. And the addiction that I'm referring to is the screen time addiction. And if you think you're not an addict, imagine for a second, what will happen if you lose your phone? Panic? Stressed? How much time do we spend looking at our phone or our eyes glued to the screen? Would it shock you if I tell you that according to the latest evidence base, we check our emails 74 times a day? We check our phones more than 200 times a day. We upload 350 million pictures on Facebook on a daily basis. In fact, by the time I finish this sentence, 20,000 new pictures would already be uploaded on Facebook. Are you concerned? If you are, this is just the start. Our attention span at our workplace is 40 seconds. 40 seconds! It is alarming and it's going to get worse as of the 7 billion people on this planet, 5 billion have got phones. One in four children under the age of six has got smartphones. The way we deal with technology on a day-to-day -day basis has changed immeasurably. And that was brought home to me three weeks ago when I was working with my two nephews, seven and five, cleaning my study. And all of a sudden, one of them found a dusty old cardboard box filled with VHS tapes. How many of you remember VHS tapes? Can I have a show of hands? Yes. He came running to me very excitedly. He said, Mamu, uncle, what is this? I said, I'll try to explain, but I'm finding it hard to. Is this something that we used to watch videos on? All of a sudden, they started swiping it. Nothing happened. They held it to their ears. Nothing happened. They looked blankly at each other, then at me, threw the tape back in the box, and ran away from the study, leaving me to ponder as to what had happened. I had an epiphany, and it made sense. I'm Generation X. They are Generation Z. They are the digital natives. They are plugged in online all the time. They have not seen the phasic transitions. I have. Over the past three decades, anything that was introduced digitally was considered a phase. Box TV, TV games, Blu-rays, Blackberries, 24 hours cable. It was all a phase. This is not a phase. Our attention is a product. It is a commodity. Our preferences, preferences are being monetized. Our likes are making someone a lot of money. The social media platform, they hire attention scientists to use algorithms from casinos to make things work for them. Random rewards, heart-stopping moments, fun failures is what it is based on. Just think about it for a second. How can something be inherently good if the motive was to captivate and manipulate the human race for the sake of money? 50 years ago, the tobacco industries, they wanted our lungs. 
The tech industries, they want our soul. The CEO of one of the biggest online streaming companies consider our sleep, our sleep to be its biggest competitor. Sad. Me and so many of you in here are social media addicts and screen time addicts. Well, it dawned on me two years ago when I went to a conference in London about social media and mental health. And I listened to Dr. Mary Aiken, who's a cyber forensic psychologist. And she talked about the impact of screen time on our well-being. I said, OK, I'll check mine tomorrow. 10 hours. 10 hours was what I was spending on the screens. We are going through a paradigm shift. We are tech savvy, but we are no more human savvy. Why are these devices so addictive? One of the reasons is the fear of missing out. FOMO. How many of you have heard the term FOMO? Can I have a show of hands, please? Yes. So it reminds me, in 2006, one of my friends, she was working in her office, and she overheard colleagues talking about a fancy dress party. She, she had not been invited. But one of the colleagues turned around and asked her, Mel, are you coming to this party? And she said, I'm not invited. But the colleague said, had a moment to think. I said, ah, I know. Why? You're not on Facebook, right? They had a bit of a laugh about it amongst the colleagues. Obviously, they were all invited through Facebook. Despite being reluctant to go on social media platforms, Mel, Mel's FOMO took over, and she joined Facebook. 13 years down the line, she has got more than 1,000 friends. She is a part of so many groups. She gets overwhelmed by the advertisements, the messages, the pictures, the videos that she receives on her timeline. She clearly says, I'm an addict. I'm trying to wean myself off it, but I can't help it. So it was FOMO that brought her in. And it is FOMO that is keeping her trapped. And it is the fear of missing out that is keeping most of us trapped. We homo sapiens have become FOMO sapiens. Now, FOMO affects us in three different ways. Socially, we have become isolated. Biologically, our brains are changing. Psychologically, we have got mental health issues secondary to screen time use. Look at me. I'm in Barcelona. Look at me. I'm at a cricket match between India and Pakistan. Watch me. I'm going to read Alif Shafak's 40 Rules of Love. I'm playing golf. Watch me. I'm going to the toilet. Really? Do you really need to tell us all of that? And do, you, do we need, really need to know all of that? We're not missing out on anything. But FOMO is making us miss out on our lives. We change our profile picture. We look for validation from people that we do not even know. We spend hours on these social media platforms validating people's lives and in the process getting ourselves validated, not realizing that every time there's a ping, there's a vibration, there's a like, there's a tag, there's a share, it releases the same feel-good substance called the dopamine. And this is how the short dopamine loops are created. And this is how we become captivated and become addicted and dependent on these devices. You change, you take a picture of yourself in an amazing outfit. You just plaster it on social media profiles. You keep on checking your phone every 10 minutes. How many likes have you got? After 10 hours, you're hit by FOMO. Only six likes? My last picture got 300 likes in like two hours. What has happened? Why, why are people not looking at me? 
Why they are not commenting on me? Why are they not liking me? Self-doubt kicks in. We are hit by tsunamis of FOMOs on a daily basis. An amazing landscape, a beautiful selfie, people sitting on the beach. All we see is a snapshot. We do not know the journeys. We do not know the background stories. We go for a vacation with family. We're so busy spending our time taking photographs and uploading it on social media platforms that we forget to do the most basic thing. Create memories and upload it on the biggest hard drive ever created, your brain. Now, the, bi the biological perspective. Our brain is neuroplastic. It means it responds to stimuli and environment. When we are born, it's a trillion cell mush with very little connections between the two. The number of connections and the quality of connection are determined by what you expose the, your brain to and what kind of stimuli are there. Neuroplasticity takes place throughout the timeline. It happens so when you're young. It happens less so when you're not so young. Your brain is a footprint of where you had been, what did you do, what you were exposed to. Imagine if your kid, your child is exposed to a device which is cold, which is non-reciprocating, which does not emanate warmth. What impact it will have on the brain, the thought process, the emotional well-being, the social well-being. And it is for this very reason that the World Health Organization has recommended zero screen time. I will repeat, zero screen time between the age of zero and two. But is it happening? What we are observing are nanny devices that are taking over the primary caregivers. The attachment theory says that you require a primary caregiver, especially in the first three years, which is the critical window, which is the attachment period, because it is important for the emotional well-being, the social well-being, the physical well-being. Lack of one will result in emotional dysregulations. It will result in lack of social skills. It will result in low resilience. And I'm seeing this in my 15 years of practice. This is the time that I'm seeing all of it. The quality of patients have changed. When I see the teen and young adults, there's nothing wrong with them. There's no, nothing much wrong with them. What they do not know is to how to cope with life. They don't have the resilience. They don't have the social skills. They don't have the coping mechanisms. Life happens and they falter. Now, the psychological perspective. In the past two decades, the anxiety and depression has increased by 75% amongst teens and young adults. There have been increase in body image disturbances because we as a society love everything that's passed through filters and are photoshopped. So, as a society, we're telling you that as long as you're beautiful, you're enchanting, you're eye-catching, we would love you, adore you, like you, but not your normal you. This is narcissism, which is trickling down from our communities, from our cohorts, and engulfing our life, engrossing our lives. Are you concerned now? Are you concerned now? But all is not lost. The great news is that we can overcome that. We can overcome screen time addiction. We can overcome the dopamine loops that have been created, the dopamine surges. The question is, how? How do we do that? I'm not here advocating to completely abolish screen or completely abstain from it. But it is very important to strike the right balance between the cyber world and the real world. 
I, rem I want you to remember two things. First thing is, you have to enact boundaries. You have to find ways to detach yourself. Just like you do intermittent fasting for weight loss, you do intermittent fasting for detaching yourself from screen. You minimize the use in public spaces, bedrooms, living rooms. And when you get time, and when you're, not, when you're detaching yourself, invest that time in people around you, nature and family. Now the second thing is, we feel that brain is that is that it's creative best when you are occupied when we have so many things to do wrong brain is at its creative best when we are not doing anything when brain is developing based on your autobiographical narratives it is developing because you have got experiences and you're reflecting on it and that is why the most remarkable discoveries or ideas that were coined happened when we were not doing anything. The Eureka moment happened when somebody was in a bath, and the aha moment of the dropping of an apple happened when somebody was sitting under the tree doing nothing. So, doing nothing, getting bored, and detaching yourself, and having me time, is after all not a very bad idea at all. We should do it from time to time. How will life be if you had less time to worry about missing out and have more time out? What might happen if you just detach and do nothing for a change? What can possibly go wrong if you space out? Be creative, be innovative, let your human strengths flourish. So, my fellow addicts, yes, you, 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 and you, I challenge you, I challenge you to let go of being homo sapiens and be homo sapiens. Let's be humans once again. Thank you very much.